In this video, I'll show you how I rescue this agave and turn it into a lush beauty like this. I found a pair of very sad looking, I believe they're artichoke agaves. Uh, it was discarded off the side of, of the road where I work. Um, it looks like landscaping had pulled them up. I think they were pups that um, had been discarded and they were left out in the sun. Um, I think had even been run over by a few cars um, as they were right on the side of the road. Uh, so I picked them up and tried to see if I could rescue them. Agaves are like a kind of succulent, so they are very resilient. They can spend a lot of time outside of the ground and without any water and they will survive. And um, rescuing something like this should be fairly straightforward. I believe they're mostly native to the Americas, you know, the, the desert Southwest Mexico, that region. Um, they're very drought tolerant because they have these roots that just go really far out, not very deep on the surface of the ground, they can even take in the water from dew. So even though they are monocarpic and will throw off a death bloom eventually, um, they do throw off a lot of pups. And that's why um, a lot of times people do discard them because sometimes they throw off too many pups mm -hmm. and more than you can take care of. Or sometimes they throw off pups and they just um, get cut by landscapers and forgotten about, which is the case with this one. But it is really easy to take those pups and either trim them from the plant themselves or take them and replant them elsewhere. So obviously this plant is in pretty bad shape. It has been um, out of the ground for a long time. It hasn't had any water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and clip off all the dead detritus that's all over it um, and clean it up and put it in some soil. These leaves are really sharp. Um, I just spiked myself on them, so I'm gonna actually wear gloves. Okay, so I'm just gonna forcefully take off. Ow! I just spiked myself. <laughs> they are really bad spikes. I'm gonna forcefully take all these off without hurting myself. Okay, so I've removed all the um, outer dead leaves. I'm gonna keep these ones that are still somewhat green. And now I'm going to trim off all these dead um, roots. And we'll see what we're kind of dealing with here. And interestingly, so see this, this is the root, or the root's probably not the right word. This is where the pup originally came from, from the mother plant. The mother plant shot this little branch out and a little pup grew from it. Um, so you don't need those on there. You can see they're all dried up and dead anyways. down here you can see this is where once it's planted these are this is where all the new roots and new growth will come out of this okay so that's looking pretty cleaned up now I'm gonna give it a good wash down with some water. So I'm just gonna spray this down, give it a nice clean. I think I had spotted some mealy bugs in there. This is looking in pretty bad shape, but I'm very confident it will come back because the stem is still pretty green. Um, there's sort of still life in it yet. And hopefully this water will kind of like kick it out of dormancy. When plants like this, like succulent style plants, 
get very wrinkled, uh, that's a sign that they are very thirsty. So this, like I said, has been out of the ground. It hasn't had any roots getting water in a long time. So it'll be very happy to start feeling its roots um, get back into soil and most moist soil at that. One other thing to note about succulent style plants, um, they are prone to rot because they are, um, you know, drought tolerant plants. They don't want to be sitting in soaking wet soil. So because they are prone to rot, it is very important to um, let them callus over. For example, this has been out of the soil for quite some time, so there's no fresh cuts. Uh, this is all very dry, so I'm pretty confident about placing it into the soil and it not rotting. So also I mentioned, um, I did see some mealy bugs on this. So I have a one to one ratio of 70% isopropyl alcohol and water. So I usually put like a half a cup of water, half a cup of isopropyl alcohol, shake it up, put it in a little spray bottle like this and just give it a spray down. It's pretty non-toxic, um, but for bugs like mealy bugs and aphids, it does um, sort of dries up their exoskeletons. Those are those are bugs that like to be um, in moist conditions, so the isopropyl alcohol is pretty effective at removing them. I'm gonna just spray it off again. Um, because this is so dry, I don't want the isopropyl alcohol to dry off the, these are very dry, um, little lower leaves. So I, I don't want the isopropyl alcohol to dry it out completely. Okay, so I'm here at my propagation station. This is where I store a lot of recycled um, nursery pots. So I've got some really big ones, some smaller ones in there, but this is, I believe it's about a gallon size pot. I think this is perfect for our agave. So some of the soils I like to use, um, Patio Plus is good. It's a outdoor potting mix, uh, which is where this is gonna be. Um, it is also organic. I also really like um, palm, cactus, and citrus for something like agave because they are fall into that palm, cactus, and citrus category. The palm, cactus, and citrus is a little bit more gritty. It's a little bit more sandy. It's got a lot of like lava rock. Um, it's really designed to be super well draining, um, not hold on to too much moisture. It'll retain a little bit of moisture, but it will let a lot of the moisture drain through. Patio Plus isn't too dissimilar. Patio Plus has a little bit more organic material, as you can see here. It's got um, what's likely perlite. It's less sandy. It's more, it looks like they use kind of probably seed husks are um, part of the makeup of that. And this one will retain a little bit more moisture than the um, cactus mix, um, but it's still pretty well draining. So I'm gonna do a mix of the two of them for this plant. With a very uh, unscientific measuring, I'm just gonna scoop this soil into here. It's about half full. And I'm gonna add the palm cactus and citrus. Give it a little mix. Sometimes it's just easiest to use your hands with this kind of thing. So I've got this pretty full. Um, that's probably good for now because I'm going to kind of hollow out the center as I put the plant in. So I have my soil mix of patio plus and cactus mix. I'm just gonna create a little hole in here. And then quite simply place this in. So this can go fairly deep because these are, you know, plants that sort of stick down um, into the soil. And then I'm gonna just hit the soil tuck it all in there so it is in there nicely. So obviously this isn't rooted yet, but I believe that um, it will root fairly quickly. So I'm going to give it a little spray or my assistant will. Okay, that's good. Give it some good water. That water should soak through because it's a really nice, well-draining soil. And hopefully that little bit of water will kickstart this into growing roots. Yeah. Give it a little more for good measure. What do you think? Good job. Nice. I'm going to store this over here as my uh, propagation station. 
I'm gonna store this a little bit out of the direct sunlight for now. It's gonna be in this sort of indirect sunlight here amongst my other propagations. And that way it won't um, be too stressed. It's uh, August, it's been pretty hot. And I think if this is in really hot direct sunlight, I think the direct sunlight would um, sunburn this and give it a little bit too much stress and it would remain dormant. However, the warmth of the summer is good, the warmth and the shade. I'm gonna leave it here and in a few weeks, it should look just like this. So this plant was found at the exact same time. It has completely fully rooted. You can see the leaves are much more stiff because they're full of moisture. Um, there's no wrinkling. It is really happy and it is even put out a couple more leaves as you can see. These were fully closed when I first found this plant. The care of this plant is pretty straightforward. It is a desert plant, which means it likes the heat, it likes the bright light and not too much water, um, but obviously, you know, some water. I always make sure that the soil is completely dry before I water it again. So I'm gonna give the soil a good feel. So even though the soil looks really dry, if you get in there, it is, there's still some moisture in there. So I'm not gonna water this. Um, for another while. And in locations like mine, Southern California, they do really well um, planted outside in gardens. They can become quite big, you know, more than a foot wide, and they will throw off lots more babies. You almost need to take care of them because they can get a little bit overgrown and you might end up getting lots more plants like this for free. And that is it. Hopefully this has been helpful for anyone looking for more info on the care and the maintenance and the rescue and the propagation of plants such as agaves. Um, this information applies to most types of agaves, not just artichoke agaves. I'm always happy to answer any questions you may have about plants. I always say I'm not a plant expert, but I am a plant fan, especially a free plant fan. Don't forget to check out my other social media channels and of course, subscribe.